That's their heads perfect. are sort of the same size as yeah. mine, so it looks like they're just Kiss them on the cheek. Mwah. Oh. <laughs>Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amino Hassan in New York City with Charlotte Wilder. Look at that. Weather's a lot nicer today than it was yesterday. Let me just say that right now. It sure is. I love how we start every show where you're in New York with me. You give a weather report. I have to. <laughs> I got to let everyone know who lives in places where it doesn't get cold. It was really cold yesterday. It was. But it was. Today, really, I didn't really want to go outside. Today was pleasant. Today's so lovely. I'm going to be pleasant as well. We and got, it's the first day of spring, Uh huh. I think. Is it? Well, I don't know, but after talking about boating, no, so it sure. is. I Are you think it sure is. About that? I think it is. I feel sure like there was a whole that? thing where it was like everybody thought the first day of spring was March 21st, but it's actually March 20th. Oh, can I tell you a bit I've come up with? Please tell I me. I think I'm going to start saying I'm going to look it up on Google.com oh. instead of saying I'm going to Google it. Yeah. That's a bit. Either that or Ask Jeeves, one of the two. Mm. All right, we got a great show for you guys today. We're going to bring it back. Everyone loves this segment, Who's Lying? Mm. Right? We just run through some recent comments in the press, and we try to figure out where the Pinocchios are at. Also, pump the brakes on that A-Rod on in the Wolves thing. We there might be some complications. Who could have seen that coming? We're going to get into some details there as well. Plus... Injuries, injuries, injuries. They just won't leave us alone. But first, I want to start last night mm -hmm. with the game of the night. This is the best game that happened last night. And this mm -hmm. is a game that had the biggest implications all night long as the Nuggets and the T-Wolves did battle. And Jokic and the Nuggets won 115 to 112 behind 35 points over the shorthanded Timberwolves. Charlotte. Yes. This was a game. I watched T-Wolves jazz earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And in every commercial break, you would think it was Rocky versus Drago. I know you probably don't get that reference. <laughs> no, I do actually. Okay, but it, it was not because I've seen the movie. But <laughs> every break, it was like T Wolves versus Nuggets. T Wolves versus Nuggets. This is the big showdown. This is the the meeting of the two Western Conference titans. So they were hyping it up. The Timberwolves walk in. They don't have Carl Anthony Towns, obviously out with the meniscus injury. They don't have Rudy Gobert either. Nas Reed has to start and. They gave Denver everything they could handle. They sure did. I was watching um, in the second and third quarters. I did go to bed before the game finished, but I woke up, I mean, to find that Anthony Edwards had dunked over Jokic yes. uh, and then missed the game tying three. And, you know, it's so fascinating the way we talk about these things in terms of who's in, who's out. Like the, the narrative of this is that the Timberwolves did this. They almost won mm -hmm. without some of their star players, the Nuggets still did win. Yes. There is a, I guess you could say, like a moral victory for Minnesota. Say, hey, we walked in here, not a lot of our main guys, and we still had a chance to win this game, which is all anyone can really ask for. Right. At the, on the other hand, you could say, if you're the Denver Nuggets, and I know Coach Malone is going to be talking about, we need to get back to our standards or whatever, but in reality, when it came down to executing at the end, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. They did it, and they end up with the win. Right. Afterwards, Jokic said, quote, it's really hard to play against a team that's missing a lot of guys. And I'm going to – it's not in the who's lying segment, but – What do you think he means? Do you think he means, like, the, the film we've watched, the way we've prepared, the things you come to expect is different? Do you think it's like you – it's hard – you start to sink to their level? The rest of the quote is, of course, the other guys are playing hard. So I think he means it's kind of like corner tiger. Right, like they know, right? They've got their backs against the wall, so they're going to fight harder, and it's going to be a level of intensity that maybe surpasses that of a team in the regular season that's just trying to get through it. You're like, let's get through this. Wait, wait, wait. why are they fighting so hard? Right. It's kind of like you know <laughs> playing defense in the All Star game. Mm. Right. It's like, oh, what a concept. Why are you doing? That? I don't know what that means actually. Yeah. I haven't seen it in so long. So the win moves the Nuggets within percentage points of Idaho, Oklahoma City. Nuggets are forty eight and twenty one. Uh, the Thunder are 47 and 20. The Timberwolves, meanwhile, dropped to 47 and 22, back one game into the third spot, third place spot. Now, Charlotte, this is the interesting thing. Mm -hmm. In both conferences, we have these wild chases proceeding. Uh, the only team that seems to be immune from all of this is the are the Boston Celtics. Yes, but everybody else is. In in play, so to speak. Right. Well, what's so interesting, I mean, is that in the East, mm -hmm. you have the Celtics, as you said. They are 10 games ahead of the Bucks, mm -hmm. which are the second in, in second right now. Yep. But between the Bucks and the Heat, 
the Bucks have 44 wins. The Heat have 37 wins. What is that math? Seven, seven games? games? Did seven, I do that right? There's 10 games between one and two from two to eight. Is and seven then, games. and then, even if you go two to nine, that's ten games. Yeah, but two nine. I know. Nine. We're gonna, sorry, Atlanta, Chicago. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for filling out the rest of the schedule for us. But. To Chicago, mm. but you know, like there is still these wild swings. So you know, this means that every game down the stretch yeah. for these teams matters. And in the West, you don't have that leader. You have the Thunder are currently a game ahead of the Nuggets. Yep. And then from one to six, it's an eight-game difference. Mm-hmm. So all of this, everything happening down the stretch matters, which I think is super fun. Right. And and by the way, even within the play-in, I know the Warriors and the Lakers are falling on hard times, but they're still— I'm not trying to face them in exactly. the play-in. If I'm seven or eight, if I'm Phoenix or Dallas, I don't want to be here right. where I, I, I might have to play one game for my life against one of those two teams. Shot for your life. Shot for your life, yeah. So— so there is incredible, and again, kudos to the league for doing the play-in tournament. Like, this is something that, from the very first one, I recognize. Oh, it's going to make the end of the year, this traditionally what has been a time where the good teams are resting, the bad teams are tanking. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, let's get to April. It's made it incredibly, incredibly competitive. That's why you see games like last night where uh, you know there's a, a heightened kind of sense of urgency whether it's the uh rockets beating up on the wizards because they know hey we're 11 but 10 is looking real shaky ahead Mm -hmm. of us whether it's the magic destroying the hornets because hey we can move up we can we can catch you know some of these teams particularly given some of the injury concerns that are happening tonight we've got miami versus cleveland implications indiana versus detroit detroit obviously is out but indiana is still fighting and clawing milwaukee and boston boston obviously is clinched but Milwaukee has to stave off Cleveland behind them. Mm-hmm. Sack at Toronto. Sack again has to. They're trying to keep up and keep off those guys behind them. Dallas and Phoenix, Utah, Oklahoma City. We talked about OKC needing to get that one. Memphis, Golden State. Golden State is staving off Houston at the ten. Philly and Phoenix. Both of those teams fighting. Clippers and Portland. Clippers are trying to hold off New Orleans. So every single game tonight matters, regardless of what. You know, you might right. turn it on and say, oh, the Blazers aren't that good. That guy sleeps on an air mattress. Oh, the, the Pistons, aren't they the worst team ever? You know what I was going through my head as you said that is, you know, at baseball games, like the hot dog races, yes. where it's like, e, and then the other guy yeah. comes up, and then it's a, that was yeah. playing in my head. I was also listening, but, no, but that if, was happening, If you want too. to imagine, like, Giannis in a hot dog costume running. Which I do, very much. Right, and right behind him is, like, Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> and their legs are moving really, really fast. Yeah. yeah. So that uh, that works, that works. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk injuries. Ow. Charlotte, by far my least favorite segment to do. Not because it's not interesting or not important, but because it's just darn depressing. It's a real bummer. The injuries, the injuries, the injuries. we got more injuries coming down the pike. This first one is incredibly crushing to everyone in this city. Yeah. OG Ananobi, post-surgical flare-up is what they're calling it, in the elbow. He's going to miss some time. Of course, he missed a bunch of time after he had elbow surgery. Remember, Charlotte, last week he came back, he was like, oh, I feel great. It feels I'm so much. I'm so glad I got the surgery as it, opposed to wait. And we were like, yay, yeah, good. He said, I feel so much better. It feels so much better than when I was playing. I just got to get my, my conditioning up. And now we get the news. <laughs> Like I said, a post-surgical flare-up. And what does that mean? Just like it hurts again, the, it's swelling. It, they're not specifying I, what exactly happened, but it seems like maybe he was not quite as good to go. Yeah, like I think, you know, obviously after surgery, there is a considerable amount of uh, atrophy. Right, In terms right. of like you're not doing the things that you would usually do. And then you go from that to being an NBA basketball player fully cleared that's a lot of elbow movement, yeah. right? Yeah. So glass half full, this is normal. Mm-hmm. They just need to kind of regulate and kind of ease him back in a little bit more than jumping right into the pool. On the other side, it's like, wait a second. Is this something else? Has mm-hmm. is something undetected? And obviously, because the Knicks are very vague and obtuse, we don't know. The important thing to note here is, of course, when he's in the lineup, the Knicks are incredible. Right. And I, if I'm not mistaken, he leads the league in like raw plus minus. In terms he does. Of, he's also the best defender uh, when he's played since January. Without him, they are a 500 team. 
which uh, Knicks fans, a famously rational group of people, um, are taking well. Yeah. I feel bad. I feel really bad for Ananobi. He. I hope that this is temporary. Well, particularly because this is a guy who, again, he's got free agency at the end of this. Yeah. So he's not just playing for the team and for the wins and to, to elevate them. He's also kind of being an infomercial for his next deal. And this right. is a guy who's had a lot of injury issues throughout his career, going all the way back to college. Right. He tore his ACL the year he came out in the draft. So, you know, I, I get it. This is a, a, there's a sense of urgency here for him that I think should be recognized beyond just the immediate of the team doing well when he's out there. Totally. Okay, all the way across, I was going to say across the pond, but it's actually just a lot of land yep. in Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles. I mean, the Lakers. Mm -hmm. It is not looking good for Christian Wood, Jared Vanderbilt, and Gabe Vincent. They are reportedly going to miss the rest of the season. Yeah. Now, Gabe Vincent, uh, Heat fans... <laughs> think of him with a whole lot of fondness. Lakers fans don't really think of him at all because he has not played that much since like, coming who? over from Miami. What does this mean? Is this is this a huge blow to LA, all of these guys? Like, what does this do to their depth? Do they still have a chance if they do get into that playing spot? Yeah, so so Gabe Vincent, like you said, like Laker fans barely know him because he's been hurt pretty much the entirety of the year. He's played a little bit, but not much, and mm -hmm. definitely not recently. Christian Wood has played, but recently has been out of the rotation. He's been the odd man out. Does it hurt? Maybe a little because he's a nice option to turn to right. in case something goes wrong with your other bigs. And you can turn to him, you know he can come in and, and be a, mo a modicum of a rotation NBA player even mm -hmm. though he's not in the rotation now. Right. The one that hurts is Vanderbilt because this is their best defensive player or in terms of like being a Swiss Army knife. Obviously Anthony Davis in the deep point race, but... In terms of being a Swiss Army knife and kind of guard perimeters, guard bigs, do all sorts of things like that, Vanderbilt was kind of their guy. And not having him available, just it's a real kick in the gut. You could say that Vanderbilt has vertical integration in his game. That was an American industry joke from say, the 1800s. Are we, yeah, are we doing railroads? Is that Vanderbilt's a railroad, Yeah, right? I think so. Or was that not steel. Steel is Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carnegie, Carnegie, whatever. So, yeah, so... Bad news for the Knicks mm -hmm. because, as we said earlier, they're fighting in that 4-5-6, 3-4-5-6 kind of area in the Eastern Conference. But bad news, worst news, I would say, for the Lakers because they're fighting for that 9-10-11. And the worst case scenario there is Cancun. Or LeBron has more time to podcast there with you JJ go. Redick. Yeah, pick the picker. Great stuff. America's play. Charlotte. I can already tell you got your glasses on. I'm ready. We're doing a nerdy story. These are the kind of stories that we love on Oddball. Maybe mainstream media doesn't want to cover it, but we're going to talk about it right here. The National Basketball Association rejected a deal involving private equity firm Carlisle that would have helped finance the purchase of the Minnesota Timberwolves by Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie, as reported by Axios. Now, hmm. here's the deal. Rodriguez and Laurie, uh, they originally agreed to buy the T-Wolves and the Minnesota Lynx, from current owner Glenn Taylor via a multi-part transaction, right? So they were going to put 20% down and then an option to buy another 40%. They were going to mortgage the Timberwolves. Pretty much at the end of 2023. And, uh, you know, and they exercised that option at the end of 2023 in order to finance. I don't know if people know this. Most of the time when people buy NBA teams, other than Steve Ballmer, they're not coming in cold, hard cash. No, they have people lined up. They have firms lined up, private equity, hedge funds, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a mortgage. They, yeah. they, they are literally getting financing from someone else. But in this case, part of their financing was also going to give a stake to the Carlisle Group, right? Hmm. And uh, according to reporting by Axios, the uh, Rodriguez and Lori team have, by the end of the month, to come up with the money... The two sides reached a stalemate because there was something else in the firm's vast portfolio that ran afoul of institutional ownership hmm. rules, which is incredibly fascinating. I, what is it in their portfolio that the NBA said, we cannot be involved with this? I don't know. The only thing I could think, I mean, we all know how moral sports leagues are. The only thing I can think is like another basketball league. Like what could possibly <laughs> be It would be funny if conflicting. they were like, all right, everything looks clear here. Okay, human rights violations. That seems yeah, fine. Yeah, not okay. a problem. Uh, uh, oh, uh, gender discrimination. Yeah, it's all good. 
Wait a second. You have a stake in the big three? Be gone! Hold on. You have ownership in Serbia? It's always Serbia. They always have basketball teams in Serbia. I mean, this is very interesting to me. Yes. The Carlisle Group, I'm going to give a little background. On their website, it says, Our firm, Carlisle, is one of the world's largest and most diversified global investment firms. Okay, so, so far we have diversified as a okay. buzzword. With six, uh, six, $426 billion of assets under management, assets, definitely a business word, across three business segments, definitely a business word, and 585 investment vehicles. We got five right there in the first sentence. Founded, Jargon's position. Yeah, founded in 1987, which was a brilliant time to start oh my God. any sort of yeah. pri- private equity situation. Anyway, you get it. Um, so I took a deep dive into this. And really? I looked into the leadership of the Carlisle Group, and I would like to show you uh, who is in charge of this company. Charlotte did some research, y'all. Yeah. Look at the journalists go. All right, let's see what we got. What do you got? Whoa! I'm going to have a hard time doing this one with a straight Whoa. face. I mean, you might have wondered, Charlotte, why are you dressed like you're about to go on a yacht? Well, it's because I think that I fit in really well with this group of people. Can we start scrolling? Wow! Because I think most of these people have the same face. Now, that guy looks like Ryan Rossillo. Yeah. Right here? No, yeah. the guy, uh, we just scrolled past him, but it doesn't oh. matter. They all sort of look like Ryan Russillo. I think they all sort of have the same face, even the women. It's just like a different wig. Um, I wanted to look like I am the daughter of one of the people that they went to business school with, and they're going to do me a favor and hook me up with a job. And this is the outfit I wore when we had the conversation on the boat about getting that job. You look like the daughter of one of these people who paid the admissions uh, department at the prestigious university that you wanted to go to for in order for you to get in. Yes, I also pretended to row crew. Um, if we could keep scrolling, I don't think we've seen a, a person of color nope, yet. A bunch I'm, of white people. Yeah. I could, well, yeah, they even have some Norwegian names, which yeah. is extremely white. Uh, let's just keep keep. Oh, oh, there it is. There. Oh, but that. Okay, we've got one person of color. My boy, Mackie Tall. Mackie Tall. Which is look. Uh, can we scroll back up again? I just want to say. As we scroll through these faces, mm-hmm. it looks like one of two things. Either A, these are completely AI generated, including Rob Riggle with a dye job right there. And Heather Mitchell, who is like Mary Steenbergen, but with like Absolutely. more work done. Yes, or, or when she was on Designing Women. Or it looks like, um, like Adam McKay used this <laughs> as a template for all the characters in succession. 100%. Can we scroll up again? Yeah. Let's go back up. The, yeah. Like this guy right here. Which one? He was the my man Christopher Finn. He looks like the uh, the COO guy. I oh, can't... he does. He looks like um, Carl. Carl. He looks like That's Carl. Carl. There you go. And then you've got. Uh, he looks like the the head of comms. Remember Hugo. Hugo. There and you then go. and then this guy right here, right behind me. What's his Shane? Shane. Shane um, I, I don't know anything about this man. He definitely went to Vanderbilt. <laughs> anyway, so that's the group that couldn't buy uh, an NBA team. I'm fascinated. I need to find out. You know what? I'm going to call my connections. Oh. I'm not even going to say, hey, what does the Carlisle Group do that g- runs afoul of the institutional ownership rules? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to ask what the institutional ownership rules are. And then I can make all sorts of wild kind of claims. Get the rules. Get them to me. I'll do some digging. There you go. Journalism. All right. I mean, I love this game. We're going to play a little round of who's lying with quotes from around the league. And I'm going to ask you to start us off. Mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry, when asked if he had extra juice for the Sixers 98-91 win against his former team, your Miami Heat, uh, he said this, quote, no, I think the juice was that we understood that was a big game for the standings. We needed that win for the standing purposes. I love and admire those guys so much, and I still root for them, except for when I'm playing against them. But there was no added juice. Just go out there and try to win a game for our team because of the standings. He said juice a lot. Yeah, and I I must stress that it's juice, J-U-I-C-E, and no other spelling that you might think, based on the pronunciation. Um, (laughs) So, (laughs) I'm saying this. This Juice. This this is my my liar meter. It's going... We can't hear you when you use your mic as a... Okay, it's low. It's low. He's that's, that's not a lie. He's absolutely right. Like, all the juice is in fighting for these standings, trying not to be a playing team, trying to move up. I b- fully believe Kyle Lowry on this. I also, like, if you think about it, it's like, would he rather be in Miami? No, he's playing for his hometown. He's back at home in Philadelphia. He's playing for a coach he won a championship with. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he didn't like his time in Miami. I'm just saying this is, like, the best possible scenario for someone at the end of their career. I'm helping my hometown, perhaps, 
compete for an NBA championship. So And the Sixers are currently seated higher. I know it's uh, it's touch and go, but, but you know what, Kyle Lowry? You're a truth teller. Wow. I believe you. All right. Let's let's move on. I, I got one for you here. Okay. Darvin Ham. Oh, fun. Said this after the Lakers uh won 136-105 behind D'Angelo Russell's history making night. Hmm. He tied Nick Van Exel's franchise record for threes in a season with 183, which is Pretty freaking incredible that Nick Van Exel's record lasted that long, even through this three-point explosion yeah. that's happened. Yeah. But uh, Darvin Ham said this about Russell. Quote, he has a green room. Not a green light. A green room. His prowess in the three-point line, you know, it's really, really elite. And we need every bit of it. Charlotte, Darvin Ham, lying or not? No, he's not lying. It's just one of the dumbest things oh. I've ever heard. Sorry, Darwin. Like oh, he him. is lying. He is lying in the sense that green room is not the same saying as green. Like you have a green light to take whatever threes you want. Okay, you have a green room to take whatever threes you want. Means you can go sit in a place before you take those three. He was like two words yeah. away from being like green eggs and ham because that's his last name. Let me ask. This was word association. Let me ask you a question, Charles. This is a real quote from a coach I used to work with. He once said, that guy has an ultraviolet green light. Which one is a worse statement? Ultraviolet green, green light or green room? Green room, because ultraviolet is still a kind of light. Green room has nothing to do with what you we're cannot, talking about here. Ultraviolet green light is someone who failed science. I'm going to just say middle school science. I'm not going to say your name, coach. All right. <laughs> uh, let me give you another one. Okay. This is Steph Curry, and we actually have video of this. This is after they lost 119 to 112 to the Knicks on Monday night as they're fighting for the final playing spot at this point. Right now, I think I could care less about where you're at. It's just the consistency of uh, how we're playing. That's the most important thing, because uh, honestly, who cares what seeds you are? If you play like we did at night, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You're not gonna get very far. So that's the perspective and the focus. It doesn't really matter where the standards are. I get a little bit of a Pinocchio nose. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know that Steph Curry is being completely honest uh, here. When he says I could not care less about where you're at, I feel like he could. Yeah. I feel like he could. I feel like there's a lot less he could care because I feel like he cares a lot and he's trying to pretend he doesn't. Steph Curry, you know, we talked about the cool jacket before. Yeah. Steph Curry is his cool jacket. He's, he's like, I don't care. Whatever. Cool I'm gonna go. On. I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette behind the bleachers. What, like, what's the one with the big furry the snorkel? He's got a cool snorkel on. A snorkel. That's you know those big heavy coats with the furry hood. No, a snorkel is what you used to go scuba diving. No, no. Also, it's look it up. It's called. It's also called a snorkel. Trust me. I'll go to Google.com for that. <laughs> Google.com. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I think but, Steph's no, lying. I, I, I think you're right because it's like, dude, you don't care where you're at? How about 11? Rockets two and a half games back. Like, you do care. You do care. And it's okay to say but that. He, but he's also right in that the way they're playing, it doesn't matter where they finish. Right. So that part's not a lie. Okay. So but he cares. So how? Yeah. Okay. His nose grew a, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards, mm. after his huge junk on Monday night over the Jazz's John Collins, which everybody is still talking about. Everybody's mm -hmm. still talking about that dunk and then Kyrie's left-handed hook shot. I'm like, his, we need some more news. His homage to me. Well, eh, was it? Okay. Anyway, uh, Anthony Edwards says, quote, it gives me chills, man, because I always dreamed of dunking on somebody like that. It gives everybody energy. It makes everybody want to defend, want to get stops. It makes the game more exciting. Is All he right. lying or is he not lying? So this is what I'm going to say. Everything he said there about getting chills, about always dreaming about doing that, about giving energy and makes the game exciting. He's absolutely 100% truthful. Everyone, this is un, everyone knows this. I mean, play basketball, that happens. It's such a uplifting I would love moment. to dunk on somebody. Well, I mean, just being oh. there for someone else on your team to dunk right. on somebody is, is a very cool experience. Yes, yeah, definitely. Right? This is why he's lying. Why? Not a dunk. Because he, he didn't touch the rim. Because he didn't touch the rim. This is the same situation. But didn't he situation dislocate that, his finger? I don't know what he dislocated his finger on. It wasn't the rim, though. It wasn't the rim. He threw that <laughs> thing in. Yes, it was a poster. It was all of these things that he said right here. Except the word where he says dunking on somebody. It was not a dunk. You're lying, Anthony Edwards. That's right. Coming straight from the man who had a follow through <laughs> that looked like this. <laughs> Thanks for watching Oddball.
<clears throat> they thought I wasn't gonna do this <laughs> anymore. Double down, mother. Double down. Nobody thought you weren't gonna double down. <laughs>